In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of His divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, we gather together as the family of God to offer to our Heavenly Father the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and to do so in a worthy manner, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow upon us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we have put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne, before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures that prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God and exclaimed, amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving. Honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are those wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, Those are the ones that have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What, sh what we shall has yet have been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, then we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based upon makes himself pure, and he is pure. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven will be great. The Gospel of the Lord. All Saints is a day that is steeped with great meaning for Christians. It's steeped in great meaning in no small part because it is a day full with stories of very curious and complex people bound through the ages who have heroic, heroically been so cooperative with God and God's grace. Each saint noteworthy in their own regard, and yet in all of their great diversity of every man, woman, and child, there is a common thread through all their stories a great love for God as well as a great love for one another. All Saints is a great feast day of triumph. A triumph of frail human beings, sinful human beings over temptation and sin and evil. And down through the centuries, the church has identified certain lives of saints to be held up to us as tangible expressions of what we just heard in the gospel, the Beatitudes, of those bodies who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who pursue peace. And so it's very fitting that our gospel is taken from that very first beginnings of the Lord's most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. For this sermon is one of the most, if not the most, scrutinized sermons of all times. For people from every background and vocation have poured over the sermon's words and phrases, searching for moral guidance, searching for spiritual insight, in their own lives of faith, in their own lives of relationship of love with God. And though our Lord uttered these words over 2,000 years ago, they still demand our attention. For you and I seek the ways that God would have us go. For we too are called to be saints. We too are called to live out to the best of our human ability these eight Beatitudes. For these Beatitudes are, in a sense, signposts, guideposts that bring us to true happiness here on earth, but more importantly, our saintliness that you and I were born to begin with. For you and I were born to be saints. You and I are born to be with God for all eternity. And all our goals as human beings here on earth is for only one reason. Get to be with God for all eternity. Be saints. 
But these Beatitudes should be read as the signposts to that true joy of knowing and loving and serving God in this world so as to be happy with him for all of eternity. Here are the things that truly will make us happy on earth. Things that will make us feel blessed, our Lord says. Take them in. Let these Beatitudes instill hope and enliven and direct our steps as they have done for centuries. Countless other men and women and children. Trust that the Holy Spirit will guide us along our earthly way to be with God for eternity. For this is what we see over and over and over again in the lives of the saints. We see individuals in their all humanity with, yes, their frailties, with their sinfulness, with their humanity, who sought that narrow way of being poor in spirit, knowing that everything they have comes from God. All their gifts, all their talents, all their brilliance of the saints down through the centuries come from God. And because they knew they were poor in spirit, they were meek and humble. They knew what to mourn and are saddened by the sins of others. And we can go right down the list and see in the saints the personification of these Beatitudes. For this is something very extraordinary but ordinary men and women. For the saints are those for whom God's love has seeped into them and in turn seeped into others. For it is indeed a very deep and beautiful mystery that this day we count ourselves here struggling on earth, still united with the saints. For the saints are not just stories in a book. But they were real live people, flesh and blood, who lived on our earth, who experienced everything that we're going through, and believe it or not, worse for some. These were the martyrs, and the confessors, and the virgins, and the doctors, and the bishops, and the married, and the children. These were ordinary people who, like you and I, come to Mass and say our prayers and try to live the best life we can. They're the ones who struggle with the devil and temptation and giving up and wondering what tomorrow's going to bring. These are the ones who live through plagues and viruses and earthquakes and floods. Yet through all of that, they stayed loyal to God relied on him. So must we. For there are days, weeks, maybe even years, when we wonder why. But all of these saints, people who relied on God, who gave hope to the people out there, loved their enemies, who blessed those who cursed them, Help those that rob them. My dear friends, we are living in a time when God is calling us, like he called the early church, to change our world once again to a place of love, to a place of hope, to a place of faith. And God is calling all of us, young and old, to be once again the message of these Beatitudes to our world today. And like the saints, we start off with our own families, the ones we know and love, and then from there, we spread the gospel message. The Beatitudes are not just like the lives of saints in statues and plaster and on paper. We, all of us, 
no matter how young or old, we're called to live out these Beatitudes, to be signposts of holiness for those who see you, for those who hear you. So speak words not of division or of hate or of violence. Speak words of hope. There's enough violence and division and hatred out there already. Don't add to those voices, but rather add the voice of hope and love and God. And see once again, lives of the saints will change their story into your own. And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of rejoicing in the communion of saints, let us pray through their prayers for the needs of our world today. For all citizens of the United States, that our participation in the upcoming election may lead to a world of greater respect for life and commitment to justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. For our children who received the sacraments of First Holy Communion and Confirmation these past few months, may, they, may their patience and forbearance be rewarded with a greater love for Christ and his church, we pray to the Lord. For Connor Riley and Jillian Horgan, who received the Sacrament of Matrimony on Friday, and for Christopher Roth and Stephanie Pavlo, who received the Sacrament of Matrimony on Saturday, as they begin their new life together, may they be blessed with many graces through the power of the Holy Family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, especially Janice Raimundo, may they receive the reward of their goodness, and let us remember, in a special way at this Mass, Patricia Linekin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these our prayers, O God of love and mercy, and bring us one day to the promise of everlasting life with you and all the saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church. Through him, you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From the history of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, Saint Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With you. of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for the sake of justice, for theirs is the kingdom. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Monday is All Souls Day. And you are encouraged to attend Mass that day to pray for all your beloved dead. Throughout the month of November, we remember the Holy Souls. Also, Monday night at 7 o'clock, we will conduct a holy hour with a special rosary prayed for the peaceful election of our civil leaders, followed with benediction of the Most Blessed Sacrament. We ask and pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the patronage of our Blessed Lady to watch over our election and of our country. As you leave church tonight, there are parish bulletins now available on the table next to the basket. Please take one with you as you leave. Have a happy Sunday tomorrow with you and your family. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The Prayer to St. Michael.
St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>